there's something undeniably delicious about buffalo wings and barbecue wings and lemon pepper wings, Caribbean jerk wings too. Just wings in general. And that's the craving Buffalo Wild Wings was built on. Here are some things you might not know about this massively popular chain. It seems like it might be a given that this chain started in Buffalo, but it didn't. In fact, Buffalo Wild Wings' actual connections to Buffalo are somewhat tenuous. The first location was opened in Columbus, Ohio, not far from The Ohio State University, in 1982 by Jim Disbrow and Scott Lowry. Disbrow moved to Buffalo in 1974 and was back in Ohio a few years later. He was lamenting the fact that he couldn't find a good chicken wing anywhere, so he and Lowry decided to open their own chicken wing joint in the spirit of the wings Disbrow had discovered in Buffalo. Other locations opened slowly, and they didn't hit the point of franchising until 1991. Buffalo Wild Wings is often known colloquially as BW3 because the chain's name originally featured a third W. It was first called Buffalo Wild Wings and Weck, and it's not entirely surprising that the last word was dropped. If you're not from Buffalo, you probably haven't got the foggiest idea what Weck is. Weck is short for Kummelweck, a type of bread roll. No one's really sure where the super regional delicacy started, but it likely has roots in the German immigrants that settled in the western New York area. The Caraway and salt-topped rolls are chewy inside and hard on the outside, and since they hold up to liquid, they're perfect for soaking up meat juices for things like beef on weck sandwiches. So why did Buffalo Wild Wings drop the weck? Bizarrely, attempts to make a true Buffalo-style weck roll outside of western New York have failed, and they're not easy to export. They get rock hard overnight, so it's probably best to just stick to the wings. In 2013, Buffalo Wild Wings menus got a major overhaul, and it all had to do with how they did business. At the time, customers would order based on the number of wings they wanted. The chain was buying their chickens by weight, though, and as chicken wings were getting larger and larger, they were paying more to their suppliers. That meant the customer was getting more chicken, each portion was costing the chain more, and without raising prices, Buffalo Wild Wings' profits were taking a major hit. It's a tricky way to do business that doesn't really have much consistency, and it also means that when chicken prices are high, profits suffer. So Buffalo Wild Wings decided to start selling wings by weight rather than by number. The goal was to serve an amount similar to what customers were getting before wing sizes were getting noticeably bigger. It may have been tricky at first to explain to customers, but people love giant chicken wings. Half Price Wings Tuesday at Buffalo Wild Wings was the highlight of the week for coworkers and drinking buddies everywhere, but that came to an abrupt end in 2017. It was replaced with a buy one, get one offer on boneless wings. It makes you wonder why they would have gotten rid of such a massively popular deal in favor of a new one that, at a glance, is essentially the same thing. It's all about profit margins. Half Price Wings got a ton of people in the door, but the rising costs of chicken wings meant that they weren't making as much as they could have been off all that foot traffic. Enter the boneless wing. Even as they increased in popularity, boneless wings weren't being hit by the same price hikes as traditional wings, so BW3 could make more with them. Did it work? Absolutely. Business Insider says BW3 profits and stocks soared after they made the switch. That's a huge deal that allowed Buffalo Wild Wings to stay profitable and keep the doors open. Chicken wings are a big deal in the United States. The National Chicken Council says Americans ate an estimated 1.35 billion wings during the 2018 Super Bowl alone. For some perspective, that means that if you were able to take all 32 NFL stadiums and fill the seats with that many wings, every chair would have to hold 625 wings. That number was up a shocking 20 million wings from just the year before, so you'd think chicken wings would be BW3's biggest seller. They're not. I mean, they're actually pretty good, but they don't have no bones they in They boneless, them. baby! As of 2016, boneless wings stepped up to take over the majority of chicken wing sales at Buffalo Wild Wings. They're the fastest growing section of the market, and ironically, they're not even chicken wings at all. When you order boneless wings, you're actually getting chicken breast sliced into wing-sized pieces and fried. Why the change? Well, it's a simple math problem. Chicken wings are becoming more and more popular every year, and while you can breed more chickens, wings are not like eggs. Every chicken can only give you two wings, and if you're selling mostly wings, you're left with a surplus of other parts of the chicken. The oversupply of all those other cuts meant that people started using the breasts for other things, thus inventing the boneless wing. 
It's no secret that BW3 takes their beer almost as seriously as they take their chicken wings. And there's a good reason for that. What goes better with wings, after all? According to The Motley Fool, about 20% of Buffalo Wild Wings' profits come from the sale of beer. And even more impressive, thanks to their 1,200 locations, they're the largest pourer of draft beer in the country. Part of that success is thanks to limited-run craft brews like Fandom Ale and Game Changer Ale. And part of it is thanks to a tiered system put in place to ensure customers have the best possible beer selection. The bigger the restaurant, the more taps they might have. Some Buffalo Wild Wings locations have up to 30 beers on tap, but they're all monitored to make sure they're popular enough that the kegs run out before they compromise quality. And every restaurant subscribes to a three-tier system. At the top, there are beers that are in every Buffalo Wild Wings across the country, common brands like Budweiser. The second tier is made up of state, regional, or major market favorites. The last tier leaves it up to the individual restaurant to find something super local, seasonal, or whatever customers request the most. You might assume that anyone going to Buffalo Wild Wings isn't going to be looking for a vegetarian option. With more and more people opting to go meat-free, though, there's bound to be one in every group of friends heading out to watch the game. In 2016, one vegetarian customer sued after finding out menu items she thought were vegetarian, mozzarella sticks and french fries, were actually fried in beef tallow. There was a catch, though, and it was a pretty big one that led to the suit being thrown out. Buffalo Wild Wings never advertised or labeled any items as being vegetarian. The customer just assumed they were. BW3 has a ton of sauces, 16 to be exact, and five seasonings. You can order things like bourbon honey mustard, parmesan garlic, lemon pepper, mango habanero, and Thai curry. And those are all great, but if you're a purist, you know those aren't exactly buffalo wings. It's actually super easy to make your own authentic buffalo wings, and it all comes down to the sauce. Even though BW3 offers a ton of options when it comes to wing sauce, there's only one true buffalo sauce. You can make it at home, and you should definitely try, because it's not just brilliant on wings. It's great for fries, for chips, for burgers, for tacos. You get the idea. The recipe? Only half a cup of classic Frank's Red Hot Sauce and a third of a cup of melted butter. That's it? You're welcome. Back in 2017, Buffalo Wild Wings admitted that it was struggling. They were starting to sell corporate-owned locations off to franchisees, and that's always something of a questionable sign. Then more news went public. Buffalo Wild Wings owners sealed a deal with Arby's parent company, Rourke Capital Group, to sell the company in its entirety for $2.9 billion. This was actually good news for fans of the chain. Arby's had been struggling as well, and in 2013, a new CEO took over and made a series of changes. The result was impressive, and by 2016, Arby's was seeing record sales numbers. Those are the same hands that Buffalo Wild Wings passed into, so the hope was that Buffalo Wild Wings would turn around as well. Customers were also immediately hopeful that they'd see some crossover, particularly between Arby's famous sauces and the signature sauces of Buffalo Wild Wings. Sure enough, by early 2018, there was a crossover sauce. Sadly though, it was a very limited edition, only available in a few locations for a handful of days. One of the basic rules of business is that when customers order, they should know exactly what they're ordering and what they can expect to get. Buffalo Wild Wings has had a chronic problem with that, and in 2020, they announced things were going to change. Originally, customers could place their order for 6, 10, 15, 20, or 30 wings. That's pretty straightforward. Then the company changed that ordering system to small, medium, and large. As we mentioned, based on weight. That's less than straightforward. Can I get a large order of spicy garlic wings? The reason for the change was that the wings they were getting varied in size. To the point where some patrons were feeling cheated by small wings. Orders started going out based on weight and sizes of wings, which sounds fine. But when one person at the table gets six wings and another gets eight, even though they ordered the same size, that's not going to sit well either. Customers were understandably unhappy, and Buffalo Wild Wings announced they were going back to the old way of ordering. In a statement, the company said that they'd heard the results of customer research loud and clear. Buffalo Wild Wings guests prefer wing count over wing weight. In early 2019, a Buffalo Wild Wings location in Kansas found itself in the middle of some terrible headlines. According to the Kansas City Star, a former employee was suing after he was fired, which he said happened after he reported discrimination and an unsafe, hostile work environment. Former employee Gary Lovelace said that the work environment was racially hostile and that employees were regularly told to refuse some customers based on race, age, and disability. Lovelace reported the conditions, which allegedly began with the hiring of a new general manager who was fired for making the report 
after working there for 12 years. Just a few months later, Buffalo Wild Wings was making headlines again. This time, Eater reported that the company had fired two managers at a location in Naperville, Illinois. The managers were reportedly fired after they asked about the race of a group of customers and repeatedly tried to move them away from a customer who did not want to sit near them because of their race. And so the host said, uh, well, we have a regular customer here who doesn't want to sit around black people. If you haven't been at a Buffalo Wild Wings lately, you'll find that when you go back, it looks a little different. That's because they're giving the whole place an overhaul. According to Business Insider, they're doing it in hopes of attracting a new millennial crowd. Inspire brand CEO Paul Brown, the same person who turned Arby's around just a few years before, said Buffalo Wild Wings is targeting millennial sports fans who like to hang out with friends but found life getting in the way of that. March Madness has always been a big deal for the chain, and they used the 2019 event to kick off their new advertising campaign, updated menus, new employee uniforms, and a new image. They're aiming to be a favorite place to hang out with friends, have some beers and wings, and watch whatever sport happens to be in season. One of the first changes is definitely geared toward courting millennials concerned about the environment. Gone are the plastic sauce containers and paper boats, and in their place are things like metal trays. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite restaurant chains are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.